Now, you might be wondering, why is there six Bulbasaur sitting right next to me on top of a bunch of shoeboxes? Well, the shoeboxes are so I could get the Bulbasaur's in frame, but the Bulbasaur's are for a test that I'm doing in today's video. And you probably guessed it by the title, but it's I'm testing how fast I can realistically print on my Ender 3 Pro. Now, a while back, I read an article that said that the fastest most people print is about 100 millimeters per second, which I agree with. Don't You don't really need to go faster than that, but we'll get more into that later. I also saw it boasting that the Ender 3 Pro could potentially go up to 150 millimeters per second and even 200 millimeters per second. Now, I didn't go up to 200, but like I said, we'll get to some of that stuff later. In today's video, I wanted to test how fast I could print on my Ender 3 Pro and still get decent results. Now, keep in mind, obviously, if you print slower, you're probably going to have better quality because your printer isn't jerking around so much or going as fast. But I figured it'd be fun to test and see how fast I could print on my printer and still get all right results. Hey guys, I'm Calum from CR Inventions, and this is how fast I can print on my Ender 3 Pro. Now, before we dive into the results of my little experiment, I'd like to ask if you're new to this channel and you like 3D printing, you like builds, and you like really stupid stuff, you should most definitely subscribe to this channel. We'll be posting quite regularly, and we have a special surprise coming in a few months that I'm not going to tell you about until that time comes. But if you're interested in that kind of content, please subscribe. We're trying to hit to 1,000 subscribers very soon, and it would be highly appreciated. So in order to test to see how fast I could print on my Ender 3 Pro, I decided to work with a few different speeds. First of all, I have my base speed, which is about 60 to 70 millimeters per second, specifically with the one Bulbasaur that is not silver over here. This green Bulbasaur, which I printed a while ago just as a test. I like to use this Bulbasaur test as, a, as just a test because it's very consistent, and it doesn't really fail very often. And yes, I know it's not exactly a torture test because it's actually a pretty easy print, but I like to use it just to make sure my printer is working fairly normally. Now this Bulbasaur was on my original Bulbasaur file that I sliced quite a while ago, and I know for a fact that it's printing at 60 millimeters per second. And as you can see, overall, you can see some lines from where the print actually happened, but it's a pretty nice print and there's not exactly a lot of flaws on it. So now that we know our standard quality for something as slow as 70 millimeters per second, which isn't necessarily slow. It's a little, probably a little higher than average, but it's not fast by any means. Let's test our very high speeds. Now our five speeds that we went with are 90, 100, 120, 135, and 150. My slicer did not want me to go above 150. I would have let, loved to test 200, but I have a feeling it wouldn't have worked at all on my printer anyway. So I went up to 150 and did different increments there. I also, on this card, or at least on the back of this card, I wrote down how long it took for each print to finish. And the results are actually pretty surprising. You might not guess what might be coming next. Let's start off with the Bulbasaur that was printed at the slowest of the five speeds, 90 millimeters per second, a whole 20 millimeters per second faster than our base Bulbasaur. Now, as you can see in the close-up that I'm about to show, you can see that it's, it's pretty rough. It does not look that great compared to most high quality 3D prints, or at least better ones like our original green Bulbasaur. But overall, it's not too bad. It gets worse as we get faster, I'll, I'll just warn you now. But overall, it's not great, but it certainly didn't turn out terrible. And uh, just a warning, it goes downhill from here. It may not be big differences from here on out, but it does go downhill. And one more thing before I move on to the next Bulbasaur, this thing took three hours and 17 minutes to finish, which is actually significantly faster then the green Bulbasaur, which took three hours and 40 minutes to finish. So that's a 30 mi less minutes, but your quality is lower. Our next Bulbasaur is 100 millimeters per second. Now, if you're wondering how I know how fast each Bulbasaur is, I just wrote it on the bottom. So this Bulbasaur, as you'll see in the close up, is fairly similar to the 90 millimeter per second one, but as you can probably see, it's getting messier and it doesn't look quite as nice as 90 and certainly not as good as 70. Now, this could just be some mechanical errors. It could just be that I'm printing so fast the printer just isn't printing as nicely. There could be a lot of factors, but overall this one turned out pretty rough and it's very similar to, in quality to the 90 millimeter per second one, but arguably it's worse. Our next Bulbasaur is 120 millimeters per second. Now we're starting to get really fast. And as you can tell, it's slowly, slowly, not, there's not big differences, but you can tell that the quality is getting worse over time. The easiest way to tell is probably on the faces between 90 and 120. While the differences are subtle, there are differences, and this one, 120, is most certainly lower in quality. Now, I would wish I had the support to show off along with the Bulbasaur's, 
but I will confirm that the supports got messier and messier as the printer tried to go faster and faster. Oh, and on that note, the 100 millimeter per second Bulbasaur and the 120 millimeter per second Bulbasaur, it took the exact same amount of time to print, which, you know, may not make sense, but I'll get into that a little later. But for some reason, they both took three hours and 16 minutes, which yes, is a minute shorter than the 90 millimeter per second one, but realistically, the 120 should be starting to get three hours flat, 305, or at least less than three hours and 16 minutes. In second place, our second fastest Bulbasaur, 135 millimeters per second. Now we're getting into the range where you wouldn't ever print this fast for any reason, but it's just fun to test it out. And like I said, it's getting messier all around. The supports were slowly getting messier. It wasn't a big difference between 120 and 135, but they certainly were messier than before. And strangely enough, 135 millimeters per second, a whole 35 millimeters per second faster than the 100 millimeter per second Bulbasaur, took the exact same amount of time, three hours and 16 minutes to print, which doesn't make any sense if you ask me. We're starting to get to the point where it sh this should take less than three hours to print, especially when you're going so fast as 135 millimeters per second. And finally, Bulbasaur number five, 150 millimeters per second. Now I know this part's starting to get repetitive, but it's a little messier, the supports looked worse, and somehow 150 millimeters per second, 50 millimeters per second faster, then the second Bulbasaur at 100 millimeters per second took the exact same amount of time, if not maybe more. I didn't track the seconds, and from what I remember, the seconds were similar, and for all I know, this took 25 seconds longer than the 100 millimeter per second one. Now, this might be a little strange discovery, but let me explain. So with 3D printers, obviously in the slicer, you can make it go as fast as you want. You're probably never gonna have to go above 80 millimeters per second, but if you really need to print something out fast, you could probably go to 100. But from what I've found, you don't need to go over 100 because at that point, your prints just get sloppier, your supports get worse, and of course, it doesn't go any faster, so it's not even worth it. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how did it not go faster despite it supposedly supposed to go faster because, well, the millimeters per second was so much higher? Well, I think it's more an error on the printer's part. It's not necessarily that the printer was doing it wrong, it was more that it literally could not go over 100 millimeters per second. Now yes, in the slicer, you can tell it to go faster than that. But from what I found, if you go any higher than 100 millimeters per second, it won't go any faster than just 100 millimeters per second. Now the biggest jump between 70 and 90, 30 minutes, that could actually save you a lot of time, especially if you're doing something that takes two and a half, three days to print. To conclude, I would not recommend going over about 70. You'd probably go to 80 or 90 if you really had to print something fast. But in my opinion, there's no reason to go above 60 millimeters or 70 millimeters per second when 3D printing. Your quality goes down and your time does not. Anyway, that about wraps up my experiment. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any opinions or you've done tests similar to this, comment that down below. Share your opinions. I'd like to hear what you have to say. And of course, subscribe to CIR Inventions. Like I said earlier in the video, we are trying to hit 1,000 subscribers in the very near future. So it would be highly appreciated if you would help us out. But with that being said, this is the end of the video. I'm Calum from CIR Inventions, and I will see you in the next video.